Hello and welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 34A. I'm Cam and this is Julie. This week's Torah portion is from Exodus 30 starting at verse 11 going to the end of chapter 34. When you ever walk into a room and you're overwhelmed, there's so much to do and you got to clean it, you just don't know where to start, so you just say, I'm going to start in that corner. I have a That's family, how we're going to so do yes, every, yes. <laughs> every day. So that's how we're going to do this week's Torah portion. We're just going to pick a place, and that's where we're going to start. So let's begin with the sin of the golden calf. Okay. It's kind Finally. Of, it's, kind of the big, Finally. Yeah, it's kind of the biggest thing in the room, you know. Yeah. So that takes place in um, Exodus 32. 32 is we go from the heavenlies to whoop, down what's happening on earth. So um, let's kind of rehash what happened. The people down at the bottom of the mountain are like, man, he's taken so long. He must be dead. Yes. He must not be coming back. So they go to Aaron. Remember, Aaron's on the mount. And he's got the book. He's yeah. got the Torah of what to do. But instead of standing up and saying, no, guys, we're, this is, we're trusting the Lord. Maybe not our time, but it's in his time. He goes with the mob mentality. Yeah. All right. That's what everybody wants. Let's do it. So he takes control. Guys, give me your gold, right? Bring me everything you got, and I'll build you something. And that's what he does. And, and I see, I kind of see the golden calf as zeal without knowledge. That's like, a really good way to look at it. They really wanted to worship him, so they just did whatever they wanted and called it worship. They took what was familiar to them. That's right. And they applied it to the Lord, which yes. we're told over and over, don't do. We see that in Revelation with the church of Laodicea. They take what is familiar, and then they take what is holy, and, and they mix, mix it together. That's and why he it's doesn't lukewarm. Want it. Right, and he doesn't want it. Not because they're complacent, but because they have zeal without knowledge. Right, so what ends up happening is they get in trouble, right? The yes. Lord's like, I didn't want that. And the Lord, not only did he not want that, he tells Moses, you know what? Your people have built a calf, and you know why? Because they credited you with bringing um, them out. Which they do say so that. They, they are crediting him with bringing them out. So because Moses is gone, they erect, they right. say, make us a God because he's gone. Correct. It's not oh, just it. God. It's that they're tangible to God. The thing that was tangible that spoke. Because remember, the Lord spoke to them all. Right. And, they and said, then no, they're no. like, no, let Moses, you talk to us. Now their mouthpiece is gone. They need a new mouthpiece. In 32.4, we see where Aaron, after building the calf, right. says, Hey, Israel, this is the mighty one who brought you out mm -hmm. of Egypt. Now, obviously, there wasn't a golden calf that went before them. Right. So right. they knew that. So that gives us the insight that Aaron's not building this to say this is replacing. They're saying this is the tangible to, who, to where God can dwell so we can see him. That's right. <clears throat> Which is really interesting because they still see him up on the mountain. So my thought is, wow, they never even had the idea or the understanding that he was literally going to come off the mountain and dwell in their midst. That was not a concept. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it, it wasn't. Yeah. And we see in 33, um, 4, when the people of Israel find out that the Lord's not going to be in their midst, they cry. I mean, they're, they're, they're crushed because see, now Moses has shown them what was going to be. Mm-hmm. And they, they don't even understand how could, that was so beyond their thought. So back to the golden calf. They have taken what they know, what's familiar to them, and applied it to the Lord. Moses goes down, he takes the commandments, right? Because now the Lord's given to him. So he goes down and he sees this. And interesting enough, we have this little snippet into don't forget that Joshua's there. Because Joshua says, hey, I hear the battle cry. And mm -hmm. Moshe is like, mm, that's not the battle cry. And then, but we don't hear of Joshua leaving that mountain. Mm. Only Moses does, which is significant because we see a little bit later on in this Torah portion that when Moses moves his tent out of the camp, because the Lord's not going to dwell there, and Moses is like, well, man, I'm still going to talk with them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. He moves it outside. That jo uh, Joshua goes into the tent, he doesn't leave the tent. And there's little hints because, remember, he's the one that's going to lead him into the promised land. There's this little where he's being preserved, he's being prepared, he's being taught by the Lord himself. Let's look at how you, he has, Moses, has the first set of the Ten Commandments and mm -hmm. then the second set. So the first time he goes up, remember, Moses wrote it, left it with Aaron, and he goes up. Then we know after everything's given, then the Lord says, 
writes them and says, here you go. He wrote them with his finger, which is considered the spirit of God. Because right. what's he going to write it on our heart with? The spirit of God his is his yeah. finger, okay? So when he comes down and he breaks them, right? He never gets fussed up for that. Mm -hmm. But what's he do? He gets called back up. All right. Yes. Now. He, because remember, after they break, he goes and he says, please, Lord, please don't, you know, don't take them out. Don't he be with them and he be with them. Interceding. Right. He intercedes, which, great comparison, when he addresses Aaron, what happens? What's Aaron do? They, they did wanted it. to do I it. just threw the gold in and <laughs> pop, came out came out. the calf. <laughs> right. I didn't know. It's like he gave birth, right? I mean, takes no credit at all. Right. Yet Moses, who wasn't even there and participated, oh my gosh. his whole thing was, absolutely interceding for them so while moses was gone aaron's in charge yes to be the sh the shepherd the yes. leader and he uh, i so What's he see do? it today. he leads them astray he, lead, he gives yes. them what they want you know what he does right he, he tickles, tickles their, their ears. ears yes <laughs> <laughs> i got it that's what he does and then here we have moses who's not even involved yes comes down and he intercedes for them just like we have Yeshua who came, he intercedes for us, right? Right. Now, let's look at that pattern. You have the first set, and it's broken. And the, that's like Yeshua's body, right? Mm -hmm. It's broken. Yes. But here's He's what the I Word love. made flesh. He came as the Word made flesh. Yes. The movie idea. <laughs> that's right. Now, think about this the second half. All right, when he's there, he says, this is the renewed covenant. Not new covenant like all over again, but renewed covenant. Mm -hmm. His body is. Yes. Okay, so what is he renewing? Well, Moshe pleaded, right? Then he goes back up, and on this one, he cuts the the stones, right? And the Lord writes them. They're both involved. Mm -hmm. So now Moses has written it himself, just like Yeshua. Uh-huh. Okay. The father's written it himself, just like the father. Yeah. And now Moses and the father have together written the last one that keeps. That's the one that's actually in the Ark of the Covenant. That's the renewed that's covenant. That's the renewed covenant. Them together as yes. one. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at it in even in a bigger scope. And hey, can I say something real fast? Okay, he didn't write a different one. No, it's the, it's same, the same one. Same one. That's right. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Right. Not one jot or tittle fell away and in it that won't. process, right? That's right. Okay. That is correct. Just check it. And hey, since the king has to write his own, hello, Yeshua wrote his, I can guarantee he didn't do any ad libbing. Right. The bigger scope here is the fact that there's a wedding. And then there's basically a cheating. Yeah. So they get the wedding, everything together, and she cheats. Israel cheats. Okay? And so the Lord goes down. I'm the Lord. So Moses goes down, and he, he does what? He grinds up that calf, and he makes him drink it. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, if you know Numbers 5, Numbers 5.15, it talks about the adulterous woman, the That's adulterous right. wife. And what she does is she's given a little bit of dirt, and they write, they, they write the curse, they wash take the ink into the water they take dirt from the tabernacle and he it's a curse and it's like here if you have been if you've cheated you are adulterous when you drink this your gut and your thigh will swell and everyone will know you were adulterous it's the lord actually is bringing the judgment but if you're innocent nothing will happen so after everyone drinks the potion or lack of a better the, the gold mixed with water okay then the Levites are told, go and kill. It doesn't matter if it's your brother, your mother, your sister, your cousin, your friend, mm -hmm. your neighbor. Kill them. Well, what are they doing? Just going around killing? No. It's the people who in their heart were adulterous to the Lord. And out of how many? We know there's 600 and whatever thousand men, not including women. So we've got a few million. 3,000 are killed. So, so that tells 3, you only 3,000. A small point, a small percentage drew everyone else back out there. This is important to understand. Aaron's big sin was that he loosened them. He loosened them. Do you remember in the Brit Hashal, the Lord says, I give you this right so you can loosen and bind? bind and loose. Because the apostles were given the ability to loosen. What that means is to set kind of the precedence, the understanding of the Torah mm -hmm. according to the Lord. Here you have Aaron loosening for the negative because he removed it and said, yeah, let's go on and build the calf. Yes. But you have the apostles loosening <clears throat> in order to bring them back in to Torah. The wedding idea, again, so these are the people who died. The 3,000 who died are the ones who showed the signs of being adulterous. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have the wedding, the divorce idea. And then we have Moses going back up and 
reestablishing the covenant with the Lord. And when he reestablishes, if you notice, in 34, it goes right back a summary of all the things that were before. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing's changed. Right. It's very interesting. He's reiterating to show you, okay, I'm reestablishing this again. I'm reestablishing, because that last one, man, they that didn't last didn't long. take long to screw it up. And the ones who are adulterous, they're gone. Because the adulterer, right, the adulterer and the one that she's adulterous with, those two must die. Well, the calf died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so did she. Now let's look at Yeshua with that second cup. Okay. Didn't we have Israel who had already been divorced? Mm -hmm. And isn't he the one that comes back? He drinks the cup. Mm -hmm. He dies. And in that, he brings back the northern kingdom in so that there could be That's one right. again. That's it's right. the same thing. You have Moses doing it, and you have Yeshua doing it. Yes. And each of them are bringing back in those who are faithful to right. the Lord. Not just all of it, but those who are faithful. And look, I, I submit an idea that it happens again. And that is, we see that with the harlot, right? We're going to see that with the Revelation, Revelation 17, the harlot. You know, we want to say it's, uh, oh, people say it's the Roman Catholic Church. People say it's the Muslim. People say it's anyone but. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest it's the unfaithful. It's, we're right back to the great. All those who are unfaithful. Right. We're right back to the great event of the golden calf, okay? Those, they're all out there. It's Israel. And I don't mean like Israeli Israel. I mean Israel as in the body, we've got those who are adulterous. That's going to be the ba uh, the, the great whore, right? The great whore of, of Babel. That is the ones who say, let's mix it, let's mix it, let's mix it. And can, again, say, oh, well, yeah, yeah, God's good, sure. We'll put the same God. You know, I mean, Allah and, and uh, Jehovah right. and all of the, it's all the same name. All the same we'll God, put it right. all in the golden cap and call whatever you want, but we all have the same one. And that is a big thing this year. That is, oh, it's been a big thing. It's been yeah. a big, but for this year, I've seen more and more. 2016 is supposed to be the year where all the religions come together. Well, there you go. Big old golden cap. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But let's look real quick. A part of that wedding, since we're on the whole wedding covenant thing still, a part of that wedding covenant is what's the ring? We've talked about this before, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the Sabbath. And we, in 31, 13 through 17, we see where it is a sign, okay? It is taught. This is what you're going to wear, right? Guard it. Treat it right. It's set apart for you. And in 17, um, it says, Between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign forever. Forever. <laughs> Always. That's not like, oh, yeah, until 2,000 years ago. No, forever. You know. So my last little point has to do with the word faces. So in 3311, we have where Moshe, you know, we're told that he meets face to face with mm -hmm. the Lord in the tent. Yet we have at the end of 33 where Moses like, God, please see your face. If you're going to come with us, I need to know who, who are you? Can I see it? Which you think, well, you're meeting face to face. So I don't understand why now the Lord's like, no one can see my face and live. I go look up in verse 11. It's plural. But here's what's interesting. It says where Moses meets him face to face. Each faces, each faces, each are plural. And then I realized, oh, who else is in that tent of meeting? It's Joshua. We never hear this, but Joshua and Moshe would make two faces on this side. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that weird? Because the God side is a plural there also. Once they fell from the garden, okay, the fall, they could not be in direct with the Father. It couldn't happen, right? Right. You had to have the intermediate. You mm -hmm. had to have the messenger, okay, right. the intermediate. So when they're meeting in the tent, the intermediate's there. The Father's there. I mean, the the Father, but the Son. You know, I mean, and, and the different, I don't know how I say this, the different aspects must all work together in order to shield them, okay? Mm -hmm. But what he wants to see on that mount that the Lord's like you can't see is that all-consuming fire without any type of filter. Right. And that's what the Lord's like, you, you can't see me without a filter. <laughs> You'll be it, gone. Yeah. It will, <laughs> poof, you're gone. And then so much for that mission, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's it's the multiple faces, the multiple facets, and then that purity. We can see God in his multiple facets. We do. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we see that, but we can't see him in his purity. You know, well, in um, John 1, I think it's 14, <clears throat> Where we're told, John tells us that we saw, we behold 
God in his glory. Well, here the Lord tells Moses, mm, I'm going to tell you. He's going to reveal it through words. So basically, as the Lord's going by, Moshe he's is by like hearing. this, and he's hearing what he is. <clears throat> then after he's gone, he can look. Almost like how many times in the word we hear it, but after it's happened, we now identify where it is in the word. Yes. That's what Moshe did. Yes. He heard it, and then he was able to go, oh, that's how it falls in the word. Mm -hmm. But when Yeshua came, we were able to behold and see that's it. Right. Yes. Okay? So we, and we lived, right? Mm -hmm. But watch out for that rock falls on you if you don't fall on the rock. It'll right. still be the same destruction. Right. So we see here with the faces, we have the plural. That's where we can function. After the fall, we must have that shield. But um, the singular, we hope for that. And I believe that will not be until eternity. That's when we have in um, Revelation 21, where we have the Father and the Lamb both present. And again, together, but both present. Okay? Mm -hmm. In individual forms, not like this, where you have Yeshua and him and then us, okay? Mm -hmm. That shield, but like this, where suddenly we will be able to interact. Interact. In, yeah, when yeah. we're in the New Jerusalem, but that's not happening yet. But I just love it. You see Moshe there, and he's, he is, he's asking to please see that. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, that's it for today. Yay. And I'm sure I'm pushing that 15 minutes a little over. <laughs> We thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great week. We'll see you on the flip side with Brent Hottishaw. Yes. Shalom. Shalom.